Welcome to the Full Tilt Poker Million Dollar Cash Game from 50 London. This sensational venue, however, is more than ably matched by our poker playing talent this evening. 13 of the most famous faces in the game, all trying to outwit and outthink each other as they aim to make as much profit as possible by the end of the game. Each player is starting with a minimum of $100,000 of their own cash, and if they lose it, they can simply reach back into their pockets and buy back in. The starting lineup for this game is a who's who of poker stars. In seat one, it's John Juanda from California, famous for tournaments, but can often be found in high stakes, no limit games. Seat two is probably one of the top three cash game players in the world, Jennifer Harmon. She regularly plays in the big game at the Bellagio in Las Vegas. Next up is the only person to win four World Poker Tour titles, Gus Hansen, originally from Denmark, but now spending most of his time commuting from Monte Carlo to Las Vegas. Then the man who needs no introduction, Phil Ivey, with five World Series of Poker bracelets and also another regular visitor to the Bellagio's $4,000, $8,000 limit game. In seat five, it's British pro Mark Goodwin, who reportedly makes just as much money gambling on golf with Phil Ivey as he does playing poker. In seat six, it's Mike the Mouth Matasau, self-confessed best player at the table. He's won over $4.2 million in tournaments, but loves the cash games just as much. Then in seven, it's the professor, Howard Lederer, who apparently has given up playing cash games, but just a few years ago was playing in the biggest game ever with Jennifer Harmon and Doyle Brunson, to name just two. Finally, in seat eight, it's billionaire retired businessman from Ireland, Alan Smurfit, who now plays poker as a hobby to some success. But who out of these players and more will take home the money and the title? Let's get straight to the action and join our commentary team of David Tuchman and Gary Jones. The greatest poker players are here at 50 London for the Full Tilt Poker Million Dollar Cash Game. Here comes the mouth himself. Now, you see, most of these players are trying to avoid playing hands out of position, but Mike Matisau has no problem with it. Jack-10 offsuit? Okay, I'm there. 15 all to you. Well, there's no way Gus Hansen throws away a pair in the small blinds. Suited connectors, pair, any kind of half hand, and he's happy to play. And speaking of suited connectors, here's Mark. But uh, one thing to note is one of the sixes for Gus Hansen's in that hand. Oh, it's a nice start for Mark Goodwin there. The pocket sixes are good at the moment for Gus. If he bets and Mark Goodwin calls, we'll probably see Madisau uh, throw this one away. Now, Mark Goodwin hasn't played many hands. He plays it very tight. Might he be able to raise on the come? Yeah, he might actually be able to get rid of uh, Gus if he did raise here. This is a feeler bet from Gus. He wants to know whether his sixes are good. Doesn't want to be calling anyone else. But he hasn't raised it. At the moment, he's got a few cards to catch. He's got a three, a seven, and an eight. And that is one of them. And yeah. it looks like a nice card for Gus as well, because if it had been up against a nine, now we'd have an up and down straight. But as it is, he's drawing to a seven just to split the pot. Mark Goodwin with the absolute nuts right now. Of course, Gus has got to try and decide what Mark Goodwin is calling him with on the floor. Right, a lot of hands he could be calling with, obviously a nine hearts, or in this case, six, seven. The way Gus plays, of course, he could have been calling with a five or four. That's what, uh, that's what Gus is obviously hoping. 10,600. Well, Gus Hansen's going to bet 10,600 into the pot. Now, the question is, how does Mark play this? He knows he's got the best hand right now. Does he want to leave uh, Gus Hansen betting up front while he has position, knowing that if a blank comes on the end, he's quite likely to get another bet out of Gus, whether he's got a hand or not? All right. No, he's decided to put the pressure on Gus. Doesn't want to give him a free card if he's got a heart. Now, this is interesting raise, obviously. 
Gus Hansen's put in a spot where he's going to have to call a raise, and he is drawing dead to chop it. That's a mighty big raise, 21,000 more. I think that's what Gus Hansen was thinking. Pot is now 46,000. He's laid it down, and I don't blame him. I think he's worked out there's not really a lot there he can be uh, in good shape <laughs> against. He might have 10 outs if he's lucky. The pot's laying him two to one. If he thinks he's up against, say, a set of fours or a set of fives. I don't judge. Huh? I don't judge if you want to rattle, huh? To get started, one player has made the nominated dealer or button. Then the two players to the left post the small and big blinds. These are forced bets to get the action started. The big blind is always double the small. Unlike a tournament, the blinds stay at a set level for the whole game. In this case, $300 and $600. Plus, there's an ante of $100 per player, which must be paid if they want to play in a hand. Once the blinds and antes are posted, everyone has dealt two cards. We have a round of betting, then three cards are placed face up on the table, called the flop. These are the community cards for all the players to use. Then we have another round of betting, after which the fourth card, the turn, is placed in the middle, followed by some more betting, and the last community card, the river. Then we finish off with a final round of betting. The best five card hand wins the money. David Tuckman and Gary Jones here. Chris Ferguson, 2000 World Series of Poker main event champion, looking up on Jesus there with his trademark long hair and his hat. And we are seven-handed here right now. We're playing short. One of the players has actually gotten up and taken a break, which happens often in cash games. And uh, when you're shorthanded, obviously you've got to adapt and adjust to playing against fewer opponents. Yeah, it uh, makes a big difference depending on uh, how many players are around the table, your relative hand values. Hands like King Jack in the middle, uh, middle position is suddenly a raising hand rather than maybe uh, it wasn't before. Looks like Howard Leder is going to take a break, pick up his chips and leave the table for a while. He's probably decided to uh, let Chris Ferguson come in and we're going to get... Uh, Someone who's won two World Series bracelets and two WPT titles, getting up and making way for a world champion in Chris Ferguson. As if the lineup wasn't tough enough already, here we have 2000 World Series poker champion Chris Ferguson. Not an awful lot of. Uh, Familiarity playing this kind of stakes cash, though, Chris. So it's going to be interesting to see how he settles down, whether he wants to try and mix it up, or uh, as I expect, I think he's probably going to sit back and play this one quite tight, not get involved too much. It'll probably be pretty well the same as when we had Howard Lederer in that spot. Not doing anything too creative. Yeah, I spoke to him earlier, and he, he, he assured me, because poker is poker. Yeah, it doesn't make a great deal of difference whether you're playing tournaments or cash. You're still making reads. Still about understanding players. And here's Jennifer Harmon with Ace King. Jennifer Harmon, our big winner so far. Are you riding the broom on me already? Wow. Yep, she's I, raised I it up. Look at these cards. I fall. But you didn't notice, right? Phil's cool. It's the yeah, Mad Hatter. I don't, I don't think I know the Mad Hatter is joined that. But she made it 20 something. Mark Goodwin's in as well with his 9 10. So's Mike with his 5 3. Wow, and there's a set for Phil Ivey. Check. Check. Four and a half. 
Well, it's definitely the best hand right now. Yeah, he doesn't slow play. He bets it right away. Best way to get some money. Well, Mattisau raises it up here. He's got bottom pair and a gut shot straight draw. Wow, that's a big bet with that kind of a hand. He's obviously trying to push Phil off the pot. Everyone else has cleared out the way. And left it open for these two to do battle. So far, Mike's got the better of this these battles, but uh, right now he's drawing pretty slim. Well, right now there's only two hands that either can lose to, a set of sevens or five six. more to the mouth. Now Ivy has re-raised him. He is out of position. He can't really afford to check it. Yeah, he can't afford to play this one too slow, Phil. No. Oh my god. 30. 32. 34. Mike's asked him how much more has he got? Nope, he releases. I think the whole uh, how much more have you got was just a uh, yeah. bit of colourful commentary from Mike. I don't think he ever intended to call that 30,000. No, he, he, raised, he raised the original bet by Phil Ivey to see where he was at. When he gets re-raised, he finds out exactly where he is. So as Alan Smurfit prepares to leave the table, someone else will step into his shoes. Join us after the break to find out who it is. Welcome back. One of the world's best, Alan Cunningham, now prepares to take his place at the table. Let's see how he gets on as we rejoin our commentary team of David Tuckman and Gary Jones. There's a space at the table, and look who's waiting to come in. It's Alan Cunningham, fourth at the 2006 World Series of Poker main event. Also the 2005 World Series of Poker Player of the Year. He's really had a phenomenal run. He certainly has. And pass. So, Howard, how's the table playing out there? Um, well, you know, we had a few big hands early, and then it seemed like the cards maybe quieted down a little bit. I mean, you know, we've had our share of pots. Uh, the last pot I played where I lost 15,000, two people flopped two pair, at least according to what people say at the table, I believe them. Uh, and I guess Gus either flopped a set or a straight, so that, that was a pretty big pot. So we've we've had some fireworks, but uh, you know we've also had a lot of quiet hands. And a raise, raise of 37, four three total. Us. We've got a raise of 3,700 here from Mark Goodwin. He's got raised up to 4,300. That's a big, big raise. He doesn't want to get a call out. But Phil's decided to call. And we've got ourselves a big pot here, 10,800 before the flop. Five, eight, four. And that's not a bad flop for Phil. Not at all. I mean, there's no reason to think your sixes aren't good here. 3,002. Really puts him in a tough spot. It's only 3,200 with 10,000 already in the middle. And called. He's definitely not going to get rid of him for that price. An additional straight card, and once again, Mark gives a free Quinn. card. And once again, he's got away with it, and it might actually get him a bet. A call, rather. 
Mark Goodwin playing it very conservatively. 6-3. Phil Ivey picked up a lot of outs there on the turn. Any three, any seven, or any six would have done it for him. Phil just can't see a hand. He can check on the turn and then bet on the river. Yeah, That's why he's going to call. The unorthodox, unorthodox player, Mark Prince. Goodwin, is going to get him a payday on the river. So a nice pot goes to the Englishman, Mark Goodwin. That's what makes these great these players and so the great, players. is that they are so unpredictable. You never really know what they have. It's really exciting to play in such a big game. I don't think I've ever played a no-limit game quite this high. I've um, played some limit games that are probably comparable. But um, they're all excellent players, and it's a... Uh, huge game it should be really exciting. I don't feel guilty against winning against these guys because they're, they're all great players and they've all been there a thousand times before and won, and won and lost plenty and I know they're trying to all win my money. So it's really just a game and uh, there, there are never any hard feelings between some of the good players. In the small blind there is Alan Cunningham, just come to the table, sitting next to the 2000 World Series of Poker champion, Chris Jesus Ferguson. Of course, when Chris won it in 2000, he got one and a half million dollars. Alan Cunningham just came fourth at the 2006 World Series of Poker Championship, where he won $3.6 million. Amazing, the explosion that poker's experienced over the last few years. The money now is just incredible. Us. Yeah, Alan Cunningham has been on absolute fire. 2005 and 6 have really been his years. He is a phenomenal player who's had a great couple of years. And he's actually got quite a lot of experience in uh, high stakes cash games as well. So uh, here's Mike taking his customary walk around. We have three players here for the flop. Gus, Phil, and Mark. 4 2. Gus having a pop with his jack high. Hoping that no one else has got any of this. Cool. Wow. Us. I was about to say he's in luck because nobody else has anything. But Ivy's going to call anyway. Maybe setting up a wow. final turn. <laughs> he's actually caught a card that he can uh, go in front with. Well, now, Gus has actually picked up additional outs here. He can catch an eight or a queen to make yeah, the nut That's actually straight. not a bad card for Gus. Check. They've both gone check, check. Ace. Of course, uh, Phil might have been calling to bluff the turn, but once he's caught the nine, he now check. actually has a hand he can check down, and it's going to send Gus's head spinning to see him having hit this. I think if I was Phil now, I'd be prepared to check it just to send him on tilt. Oh, 6,000. I can even not even be that hand. Awesome. <laughs> what, Queen Jack? Can't do <laughs> <laughs> I can't even beat the Queen Jack. I knew I had two Here we are at the ranking of the hands. First, we have high card. In this case, a king high would win it. Then we have one pair. In this case, pair of aces. Then two pair. Jackson nines will do it. Then three of a kind. Three of the same one. Three fours. Then we have a straight. Five cards in order, not the same suit. Then a flush. Five cards, the same suit. Five hearts will do it. Then we have a full house. Three sevens, two kings. This would be sevens full of kings. Four of a kind, four kings. Then we have a straight flush, five cards in order, all the same suit. And here's the most beautiful hand in the world, royal flush, 10, two ace, all the same suit. I'd hate to think how much money has been won between the players around the table, not just in tournament winnings, but we have some of the best cash game players anywhere in the world sat around this table, and they are going at it. 18 to call, pass. There's Chris Ferguson passing once again. 
Someone really should uh, dust him off. I don't think he's actually volunteered a single chip to a pot yet. Well, you pointed out correctly, Chris Ferguson, really a tournament player. It'll be interesting to see how he adapts to a cash game. I think we've already seen how he's going to adapt to the cash game. He's going to lose the minimum, is basically what his plan is. King. We've got a bit of a... Both of them have flopped top pair. Both of them are checking it. Well, hold them as a game of kickers here. And in this case, Phil Ivey's got the best of them with the 10 kicker. So, King 10 for Phil, King 5 for Gus, who probably thinks he's winning right now after they both checked the flop. Is he lining up for a raise? A raise to 8,000 total. A small raise. And called. Phil calls straight away. Well, whether Phil was worried about his kicker or not, I don't think he is anymore. Is there any value to Phil raising this? No, not really. He's a bit worried it might have been a set after a check check on the flop, maybe. He calls. Kings and tens for Phil. Kings and tens, two bets. So Phil gets the better of the Great Dane in this pot. Bill Ivey now, our big winner, up $29,900. Jennifer Harmon in second place, up $26,700. John Jawanda still pulling up the rear. He's down $42,000 today. Yeah, he was down a little bit more than that. Looks like he's slowly crawling back. We're at 50 London for the Full Tilt Poker Million Dollar Cash Game. I'm David Tuckman. Here with me is Gary Jones. We've got two new players in the game. We have Eric Seidel and Roland DeWolf. Gary, what do you know about Roland and, Ga and Eric Seidel? Well, uh, it's kind of a someone who's been very, very good in the past. Eric Seidel has made an awful lot of money even before kind of the internet boom took over and made poker as popular as it is today. Roland DeWolf is kind of the opposite. He's someone who's only come into his own over the last couple of years, doing very well in both 2005 and 2006. He really is kind of uh, the face of the new poker. So it'll be interesting to see how these two adapt to playing cash games, because both of them have had most of their success in tournaments. But uh, I played with Eric a little bit in cash games, and he can play cash as well as tournaments. So. Uh, I'm not expecting him to give anything away. <laughs> and look at who we've got at this table with us. We've got Gus Hansen and Phil Ivey sitting next to each other. Two of the biggest faces in poker. Danny. Pass. Pass. Buttons Roland. in front of Mike Mattisau now. Pass. Eric and Roland are going to sit out for the first Pass. hand. Here's Mark Goodwin. So far, he's had the... Uh, the best of the early action in this cash game. He's up about $34,000. Raise it up from Mark Goodwin and a call from Mike Matters out. Good suited connectors there for Mike, and he's got the button. Well, Matters has outflopped Goodwin here. Check. He's got top pair. And Mark hasn't had a stab at it. Well, if, once he's checked it, you think he's going to give this one up. No, oh, clearly, if, once he checks, he's giving it up. Now, Goodwin's our big winner today, but he's played it really conservative. Yeah, he, was, he was a little bit erratic the very first hand, but since then, I think he's done very good. Yeah. You have to call it before the turn card hits, by the way. Is there any other rules I need to know? 
So that one goes to Mike. And you have to call it and say, okay, that's my problem. The main difference between a cash game and tournament poker is that in a cash game, sometimes uh, when you put $100,000 in a pot, it's your own money. And in a tournament, when you put 100,000 chips in a pot, a lot of times you bought in for 10,000, you know, 5,000, whatever the buy-in might be. Um, so it's not really that big of a deal when you lose the pot. It hurts a lot more in a cash game when you lose 100,000 of your own money. I think cash games you can actually make more money because in tournaments, you really need to make it far to make good money playing tournaments. The art of cash games, in my mind, is, is to forget that it's actually money. It's just a tool, and you know, these are just tokens, and, and you're just betting with them. But you don't actually think, ah, oh, that's, a, that's a nice car I'm just calling with here, or you know, that's a, that's a lovely family holiday, or something like that. I think you know, the true poker players are the poker players that excel and enjoy and do well in multiple forms of the game. Two bracelets. Awesome. Well, you, you know, these aren't easy to win. I remember this one, like it was yesterday. My opponent had me down to my left. Sorry. Anyway, it's down to my last <laughs> few chips. So, I had to call. Played there before being a USA Poker. Uh, oh wow! <laughs> wow! I had to share. I don't believe that. Wow! You might lose some. Um, I had to share the sponsorship. Pass. It's expensive here. Pass. The players certainly seem to be enjoying themselves. Pass. Plenty of conversation going on down there. Pass. Golfing buddies, know? Phil Ivy and Mark Goodwin. Two thousand two hundred to play. Gus Hansen raising it up with his queen jack of hearts. Pass. Looking good so far. 2,200. Quack, quack. Quack, quack. I should be used to that bit by now. Oh my god. I don't think Mike's ever not defended his big blind. All right, you know what well, I Mike's caught the ace, but there's a flush draw here for Gus. Yeah, it's an interesting flop. Oh, let's take a suit too. So it comes up hard. 4,100 Bet from Mike. It's full well, man. Putting the pressure on the Dane, hoping uh, his ace is good. Tough spot for Matisau here. He doesn't have much of a kicker. Yeah, but he has put the pressure on Gus. It's going to be a question of how Gus wants to play this one. Is he going to put more pressure back onto uh, Mike? He is the pre-flop raiser. This does look like a find out where I am kind of bet. <laughs> Putting the pressure back on him. Raising 13. Mark gets out the way, leaves it to these two. Well, that looks like a call to me. It's a brave. Check. Seven doesn't help Mike's hand. Gus Hansen with the strong semi bluff on the flop. Mattisau calls him, though, and you wonder now if you're Gus Hansen, do you take the free card on the turn? If he checks, he knows he's probably going to have to catch his flush to win this pot. If he bets 25, 30,000, it would take one big call from Mike Mattisau with ace with a three kicker. Really would. And he takes the card. 
Yeah, he's decided to take the free card. Ooh. Well, now if you're Matisau, you really can't beat anything. You can't beat a big ace. You can't beat the flush. The only thing you can beat is a bluff on the flop. Exactly. Be interesting to see if Mike tries what's called a stop bet here. Bet small. Doesn't want to call a 25, 30,000 bet from Gus. So he puts 10,000 out there. What he should probably do is check fold here. Definitely not a bad play. The pot's 42,000. Maybe you put out a $10,000 bet, almost naming your price for a showdown. 20. Well, his stop bet's a bit bigger than mine would have been. It's 20,000. That's good. can't see him not calling this one, though, David. No, no, you? clearly he's going to call, but is there any value to raising it? Remember, there is a paired board. I really can't see him raising it either. But then, Gus does a few things that uh, the rest of us might not. Caution certainly isn't his middle name. Obviously, he can't beat the king high flush, and he can't beat a full house if Mattisau had, say, a set of sevens or a set of nines here, or somehow had pocket aces. He's moved his chips all in. Wow. Well, what do we know? As Gus Hansen moves all his chips in there. Pot is now $144,000. $144,000 pot here. And now Matiso is thinking, is this guy bluffing me? Could he be bluffing me? Well, what's going through Mike Madisau's hand here, uh, mind here? He's checked the turn, Gus. How can he check the turn and then move all in against me once the deuce comes? Well, well the interesting play is you normally wouldn't think somebody with a flush draw would make this move. Exactly. Well, he's mucked it. <laughs> Gus wins a nice pot. Very nice pot. <laughs> this is falling up. When you play poker, you're trying to make the best decisions based on the information you have. Uh, and really, the amount should be fairly insignificant. I mean, it should matter. You shouldn't be careless. But you shouldn't base your decisions on whether you could buy a car or half a car or two cars for the amount. You should base your decision on what's the best move I can make here. So Gus Hansen continues to rack up the chips. Can anybody catch him? Find out after the break. The action here is intense at 50 London. The button is in front of Eric Seidel. Gus Hansen in the big blind. Phil Ivey's first to act. We're going to kick this game up. Now, right out the mud here. Phil lays it down. Mark Goodwin looks like he's called. Yeah, Mark's in with his queen, king of diamonds. Eric calls for 600 on the button with his uh, 10 jack. It's a hand, good hand on the button. And he makes up the big blind with his nine jack, Roland. That leaves just Gus Hansen. Oh, and Gus Hansen's picked up a couple of ladies here. Now, how do you play this in the big blind? Well, 
He probably doesn't want to leave too many people in this pot. He's going to be out of position against anyone but Roland De Wolf, so I'd expect quite a decent size bet. And he does that. Now, a lot of ways to play pocket queens here. Oh, you can nice. definitely slow play him and kind of disguise your holding in a cash game or play him strong like Gus Hansen has. Well, that's a raise of 5,000. That's playing them strong. Clearly, Gus Hansen does not want to see a flop here. He certainly doesn't want to see a flop four-handed. Well, that's a call there from uh, Mark Goodwin. And he's in pretty bad shape. He does not want to see a queen high flop. Now, if the case queen were to come out, Good one, be in trouble. Ooh, one over card to Gus's Queens, and it's the one he did not want to see. It's a king. Now, obviously, Goodwin way ahead, and we can see that, but he's obviously got to be scared of Ace King. Well, that's a big bet from Gus. If Mark Flat calls this. Which he has. There's a chance Gus might think he's still in good shape. It, it wouldn't be unheard of for uh, Mark to call with, say, pocket nines or tens in this spot. One over card. Thanks for mentioning Pot is now $33,000. The great Dane way behind. He's going to need one of the... He's going to need the king He goes, check, check. That's the card that uh, neither player would like to see. Well, actually, Goodwin's actually backed into a flush now. Oh, yes, he's coming to a backdoor diamond flush. He took his free card on the turn. 15000 not much Hansen can beat out there. He can't beat the king, he can't beat an ace, can't beat a three, and he can't beat the diamonds. The point is, what he, probably going through his mind here is what could Mark have called with on the flop that he can bet on the river? <laughs> ace king is about the only hand, really. Well, he could also, remember, he could have had busted heart draw. He could exactly. have called him with a heart draw, missed it, and now he has to fire at it. Maybe that's, that's what Gus that's is what's thinking. That's going through Gus's it's mind. like the worst call ever. I'm absolutely certain you'll make worse. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> that is no doubt. I really think that Gus just can't believe there's a hand that he can bet here that he's called on the flop with. Is he slow playing aces? It's gonna be, it's gonna be very easy for him to give a middle pair and call this back. See, you see him shaking his head in disbelief because he can't really figure it out. Obviously, always hard to see those backdoor diamonds. Pot is $48,000. He's decided to call. I think he's given uh, Mark a medium pair or a busted heart flush draw. 
That's the one hand he probably hasn't thought about. And that is a very good pop for Mark Goodwin. Wow, great, great pot there. Mark Goodwin is now our big winner, up to 163,000. There it is, Mark Goodwin up 63,000 for the day. Phil Ivey in second place with 34,000. Gus Hansen gives a lot of his winnings away now, he's only up 13. And uh, Matisau is our big loser, he's down 34,000. Buttons in seat number two. Phil Ivey in the big blind here. Action is on, Mark Goodwin. Mark's not going to play. Madiso has a reach for, uh, you're just calling the 600. Well, madiso has got king, queen off suit here. It's not a bad hand to play. <laughs> that, on the I, other hand, is a very nice hand to play. Yeah, I think the 2005 World Series Poker Player of the Year, Alan Cunningham, is going to play that. I tell you what, even I would play that hand. I don't think you have to be the 2005. Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying I played as well, but I, I, I would play it. Phil's in as well. Well, in a deep stack, no limit cash game, this is the kind of hand you want. Snap off a big hand. And uh -oh. that's a great first card for Phil. And now the question is, Alan Cunningham was a great player. Can he get away from pocket aces? There's 11,600 dollars in the pot right now. And we have a big, big pot brewing. And I love the bet by Ivy here. He bets right into the razor. And Alan knows he'd do this with so many hands. Pot is now $21,000 here. Phil Ivey and Alan Cunningham, they know each other extremely well. <laughs> and Ivey has bet 15,000 right into the two red aces. And what do you do if you're Cunningham here? Alan has already shown that he's got an overpair to the board. That's what his call on the flop represents. And yet Phil still keeps one afire. Alan's got to know that it might be on him at the moment. Pot is now fifty-one thousand dollars. And the river is certainly not an action killer. The ten of spades falls. And now it's just a question of value betting. How much can you bet here? Can you bet half the pot? Can you bet twenty-five thousand? Can you bet more? We're about to see what one of the best players in the world would bet in this situation. He's done a great job of building himself a big pot. And this is the reason you play pocket deuces, so you can snap off these big hands. Phil Ivey's so deliberate with every move he makes. I think Gus saw the 35,000 coming before any of the others. He's on uh, Phil's right. The question now, of course, is can Alan lay down the aces? Now, 
Now the pot is 86,000, it's 35,000 to call. And at this point, you know, you could, is there any way that Ivy had, say, pocket queens, pocket kings? If he was betting a straight draw, the well, 10 Well, he's there. laid it down. That is why he's the 2005 Player of the Year. Alan Cunningham got away from the aces. I say get away from, he still managed to lose over 20,000 in the pot, but it could have been a whole lot worse. Great play there from that, Alan. Absolutely amazing. 99% uh, of the poker players in the world would have lost their entire stack there with the aces, or at least another 35,000. Alan Cunningham shows us why he's so great. I mean, that was phenomenal. So here's the leaderboard for the top three players. An English pro Mark Goodwin has moved up with $60,000 in profit, but Phil Ivey is right on his heels, and with such big blinds, the game is still very much open. So that's it from 50 London. The action at the table really hotting up. And we'll hope you join us again next time when one of these players will bid to become the Full Tilt Poker Million Dollar Cash Game Champion of 2006. But from all of us for now, it's goodbye.